Welcome back, K Wings fans, to a new and improved Just Winging It with your new and improved host, Chip Stevens. I'm extremely handsome and humble. A little bit about me. Um, and before I get to our guest today, I want you guys to know that when the big wigs called me in, the big guns, and they asked me to come do this, <laughs> who am I kidding? They begged me to do this. Anyways, I said the only way I'm doing this is if I have complete control. Well, guess what? Chip Stevens always wins in negotiations. I'm in control. This is the no chip zone. Anyways, enough about me. Uh, let's get this party started properly. Um, without further ado, I want to bring out today's guest. Some of you may know him. Uh, it's Mr. Jim Patterson. Jim, uh, they tell me you're the director of public relations and brought. What? That's not the right name. What? What? It's what? John Peterson. What? What's that? John Jim? Peterson. You, Jim. You, you know what? Jim's fine. Jimothy. <laughs> I. I know your name's John. It's a power play. I'm in control. I'll go by Jim. Jimothy. Uh, anyways, uh, we're here with John Peterson. Uh, am I correct in saying director of public relations and sure. broadcaster of your Kalamazoo Wings? That works. That's great. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. We're really winging it here, John. And I'm going to give you some hard-hitting questions, okay? I'm terrified. Let, let's do this. Uh, let's just cut to the chase. Boxers or briefs? Whoa. Briefs. Boxer briefs. Oh. There's a difference, right? Hybrid. Hybrid. Well done. That's impressive. Keeps everything. Well, uh, John, let's talk a little bit about you and what you do. But before we do that, let's talk about where this all started. All right. Tell us about where you went to college. I went to Arizona State University. Absolute blast. Um, it was really fun for me to... Sun Devils, right? Oh, yeah. Sun Devils. Oh. We're not, we're not the, uh, the Wildcats... We don't like them down in Tucson, so we're. W it was a good time because I I learned my broadcasting craft there. Got to work doing Pac-12 games, football, basketball, baseball, hockey, and couldn't I wouldn't have traded it for the world. It was it was a great time. So is there a special school or something down there that have, piqued your interest? I'm sure you've heard of the Walter Cronkite. Oh, the original. Walty? You know Salty Walty? Our, our school was the Walter Cronkite School oh, of Journalism. Did, newsflash, people, I know Walty. John, John probably doesn't know him, but uh, we called him old Salty Walty back at university. He liked margaritas, if you know what I mean. Uh, he was a good guy. Oh, I bet they didn't. Yeah, he was. I didn't know him like you knew no, him. No, no, no. And I'm but, sure you didn't read that in a book. No. But uh, I lived it. Anyways, um, that's great. So you went to Arizona State, and then where did you go from there? I went home to Minnesota not knowing where my career would start, and I got my first gig up in a little town called Warroad, Minnesota. It was five minutes from Canada, neighboring town's Roseau. And I, uh, I was one of 2,000 people. There were two stoplights and three hockey rinks. Who? Uh, since we are here talking about hockey... Fun fact, you may not know this. I don't know who out there knows this, but did you know that in 1980, the U.S. men's hockey team in the Winter Olympics won it all? Were you there? D did you know this? I did know that, yes. You did. But did, I'm, I'm thinking that you might have been there. Did, did you know this? I did, you, I did. So... I was there, actually. This, so what you're telling me is I was the only one that didn't know before this interview. Yes. When did you find that out? Just I, now? I read it in a book. Oh. Right before I came here. It's a pretty um, great moment. Uh, anyways, that, that zinger didn't work. You got me, John. <laughs> John, so after you went to War Eagle or wherever it is, you, whatever town, I don't, I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. Uh, I was looking at my reflection in the camera. Where, where'd you go from there? I was there for three years. Did high school sports, hockey, basketball, baseball, softball, volleyball, football, Ooh. the whole gamut. Did I was a country music DJ for those three years as well. So I've got whoa, my, whoa, whoa. Yes. Yeah. What's your favorite song you played? What was, oh. what was your moniker? DJ Jazzy John? I don't remember. It was too long ago. My memory is like... Phew. 
DJ Country Fresh? S something along those lines. Okay. Something okay. that the small town, you know, would, would latch on to. Okay. So after that, I went to work for the junior hockey team in Austin, Minnesota, uh, which is right on the southeastern corner called the Austin Bruins. They're in the North American Hockey League. So I was there for two years, um, and it was just on weekends by the game. And so I had a second job that I would work full-time during the week up in the Twin Cities. So I lived in my mom's basement until I was about 25, but mm -hmm. I was still following the dream the whole time. Um, real quick, not to, uh, I'm going to digress here. What's going on with your hair? You know, I was under the impression that phase three or phase four was restaurants. Mm -hmm. And then phase five was schools. And then phase six is sports arenas and sporting events. And then like phase nine was barbershops. Oh. Did I have that right? Uh, I have no idea what in the hell you're talking about. Fa of what? this reopening Let's can we edit? Business. Can we edit that out? I, no one cares. Um, I was just. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. This is the longest my hair's ever been. So my uh, my parents are going to be a little terrified when they see me in a few weeks. Well, I'm sure they'll still love you. But uh, you know what, John? Let's change things up here. All this hockey talk is really, you know, I really want to get to know you a little bit more. And I did some research on some hockey slang. Before oh. I came here. So I'm going to ask you, I'm going to say a word, and I want you to tell me what it means in the hockey world. Are you ready? Yes, I'll try. A biscuit. That's the puck. <laughs> That's an easy one. You're welcome. Dangle. That is a really nice stick handling move. Oh. Kind of like a toe drag. Well, to the layperson maybe, but to an expert like yourself, I believe it's a deke. Okay, that works. Yep, yep. What about a flamingo? Oh, I'm guessing it has to do with a shot where your back leg comes up in the air. I don't know. It's when a player lifts his leg to avoid getting hit by a shot. Come on here. Oh, yeah, okay. That's Bring me in men's league. Yeah. Bring it home here, JP. Lettuce. That's what I got going on right here. All right, not bad, not bad at all. So, anyways, before we got started, uh, I was talking to the cameraman back here. Bill or Francis or whatever the hell his name is. I don't really know. I wasn't paying attention to him. I'd be um, Tim. Tim. Oh, hey, Tim. I knew that. Anyways, you mentioned you consider yourself a hockey aficionado, so I wanted to know if you could maybe go into the origins of the term puck for us. I have no idea. <laughs> I know it's frozen, vulcanized rubber. That's deep. That hurts a lot. It's compelling. When it hits you. I didn't do any research. I just wanted to know if you knew. I don't know when the term came about. So, anyway. I should probably know that, though. That would be a basic thing, right? I, look, I'm just here for my looks and talent. I don't know much about hockey. Um, let's do this. Let's, let's change it up a little bit. I like to call this one rapid fire, okay? Uh, I'm going to say something. You have three seconds to respond. As soon as you respond, I will go on to the next question. And then afterwards, we'll come back and talk about a little bit about it. This is to give us all a little look into the mind of John Peterson, Director of Public Relations and Broadcaster for none other than your Kalamazoo Wings. Are you ready, John? I think so. Don't worry, they're not too hard. I'm a simple man. If you had a pet fish, what would its name be? Herbie. Herbie. What's your favorite flavor of Spam? I don't like Spam. Okay. Even though it's a Minnesota thing. Moving right on. Name one person, dead or alive, you'd like to have lunch with. Abraham Lincoln. Friday Night Lights, the movie or the TV show? The movie. Favorite hockey-themed movie? Slapshot. As a child, did you wear Minnesota Viking underoos? Probably, but I don't remember because I don't own them anymore. Wow. I would assume I did. That's all I've got for you on Rapid Fire. Um... <laughs> Herbie. What, let's talk a little bit about Herbie. You would name a pet fish Herbie? So, long sto short story. I had a fish named Herbie when I was a little kid. Herbie Hancock? I don't remember. A Herbie Hancock. The guy who signed the Declaration of Independence. No, no. That's John, Augustine Hancock. John Hancock? Ah, uh, yes. So there's a famous Minnesota twin named Kent Herbeck. Oh, yeah. He's a chubby, wasn't he? Yeah. He's, Lefty, he's, number he's, 14. He's a big boy. 
And another twin named Kirby Puckett. They're my two favorites growing up. I didn't. Mm -hmm. So anyways, they won a couple of World Series. So when I was about four or five, we got a couple of fish from the pet store and a little crayon, like a blue crayon fish tank. Mm -hmm. And I named them Kirby and Herbie. And from my recollection, they died overnight. So they lived about 12 hours. Yeah. That was the only fish I ever owned. So when he asked me, that was the first name I could think of was Herbie. If you're watching this, don't ever let John no. fish pet your fish or whatever they call it. Um, fish pet. Yeah. Write it down. John, what's your fondest memory of your first year here in Kalamazoo? Let's get oh, back to the serious man. stuff. You know what? Before you go there. I'm going to have to think about it. Yeah. I'm going to need. Let's, let's, let's toast to this interview. I was going to ask if you were going to share, because I did see two over there. It's going, <laughs> it's going pretty well, and quite honestly, I don't know that you'll be asked back. So, let's cheers to you, this my friend. This might be the end of my career. Oh, that's good. I'm sure you could get a drink like that when you come to a Kalamazoo Wings game. <laughs> Chips, good product placement. I, I, I no, enjoyed that. So, let's talk about your fondest memory, or memories. Let's... let's Let's take a deep dive into who you are as a man and what your fondest memory is. There are some good ones. There were, there were some really good memories. I would say one that stands out was the ugly Christmas sweater game mm -hmm. when we, uh, we played Cincinnati and they had our number all year, it seemed like, and we were finally starting to turn that corner and we were losing late by two goals with like three minutes left and Dylan Sadoway scored a hat trick to tie it force overtime and then we won it in overtime and it was right before Christmas break so we were all kind of two days away from really going into vacation mode but uh, that one stands out from a hockey standpoint um, man there are too many good memories to count from a, just a, being a part of this organization that I'd have to think about it we'll come back to that one well I'm controlling this interview so you will think of one now. Right, right now no, I won't put you on the spot like that. I'm a nice guy. Um, what I will do is ask you if you've ever been a champion of anything. Oh, man. Um, my eighth grade baseball team won really? the championship. What um, was your team's name? The Cubs. We were the Woodbury Cubs Okay. Uh, in Woodbury, Minnesota. And uh, I was the starting pitcher and the closing pitcher of the championship game. Figure that one out. I don't know how that happened. I don't know hmm. how that was allowed. That was like the only thing I've ever won. That I can think of. I've come close many times. Well, you're in the presence of a champion. What have you won? Well, I'm, I'm, I am a state champion from my high school days. Uh, I have two of these rings. Unfortunately, the other one is in a museum somewhere in Ohio, and they weren't able to uh, take it out for me. Did but anyways, uh, I am that. I am also a champion of life. Oh, that's uh, good. Yes. <clears throat> so Anyways, enough give about me. Championship rings for mustache wearing <sighs> or fashion, because because that's what I would guess you got. I'm bringing it back, John. Okay. Right. I am I am bringing it back hard. Um, have you thought any more about that question or memories? If not, I've got other questions. Um. All right. I'm moving. Yeah, on. that works. Um. In, in a nutshell, just kind of give us what your duties are. Here, I mean, like I said, I'm winging this, so I'm all over the place. Structure, throw it out the window. Give it to us. And I don't want, like, in a nutshell like this, I'm trapped in a nutshell. Just tell it. Tell the crowd. I want you to, no, don't look at me, John. Look deep into the camera and tell the people what it is you do. This is about so, you, John. So, uh, you're probably used to seeing me on this show interviewing people, so this is a little weird. Uh, so I do media, broadcasting the games on the radio, uh, social media, uh, press releases, website work, pretty much anything media related behind the scenes, creativity that we bring to the table. I help uh, our camera guy, what did you say his name was, Bill or something? Francis. Francis. Was it Francis? Uh, with, with ideas, uh, oh. fun videos like the Holiday Wishes video. Um, and I just am very self-deprecating just to make you guys laugh. And that's, that's basically what my role is. So you'd call yourself a creative person? Try to be. Right. But without the help of your team and cohorts, your creativity is, would... How would you rank it? A through Z. Or A through C. Let's, is, let's simplify. Is A the high bar or the C, is C the high bar? It's I'm like gonna let you I'm going to let you decide. B, B and a half. 
B and a half. That's a really good score, John. I'm proud of you. I'm Thanks. very proud of you. Um, let's change it up a little bit. Are you a dog person or a cat person? Dog person for sure. You're a smart man. Don't tell my cat that. But talk a little. You have, oh, but you have a cat. I have both, yes. Okay, well, let's talk about that. What's your dog's name? Dog is named Gunther. Mm -hmm. We named him after the TV show Friends, if you're familiar with the blonde guy, Central Perk. The, mm -hmm. you know. Yes. So uh, He was a barista. He was a barista. Of sorts. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, my dog named after him. I once gathered coffee beans from the Colombian fields. Oh, yeah? Yes. By hand? No. They make machines. I just mm. gathered them. I'm somewhat of a coffee hunter and gatherer. Anyway. Fascinating trade. Yes, it's uh, my travels have brought me all over the country, and that's why my uh, my voice changes. And I I was talking like this earlier, and now I'm talking like this. It's sometimes my mind goes to a place where I don't remember where I am, and I talk as though I'm back in the country in which I was when I made the memory. I can't. Anyways, do you have a long lost relative? For a San Diego on, that's mm -hmm. last name is Burgundy, by chance? You know, I, I get that a lot, but actually, was I was friend. born and raised here in Kalamazoo. Mm -hmm. And many theologians and scholars have done research, and they believe that Kalamazoo, in its true and full, you know, most purest meaning means place of wonderful hockey. But oh. we'll never really know because no one really will ever know. Um, I mean, quite frankly, for, for centuries, scholars and ice theologians have claimed that the first hockey game was played here in Kalamazoo. I'll they, take your word for that. They said there was a pond or a lake or a body of water that was frozen somewhere, someplace, and people played. But we'll never really know, will we? Unless you were there. We won't. Um, what else would you like to talk about, John? I'm giving you. I'm going to give you the reins. Do you have well, more my, memories? Let's... My cat's name's Hemingway. Well, you notice how I stopped after we heard about Gunther because yeah, I, my, I myself am a, a dog person. person. Yeah, yes, yeah uh, we can skip over that cats. one. Cats. Um, uh, anyways, uh, unfortunately, I do have cats as well. I don't claim them, uh, but I am their adoptive father. Okay. So, um, let's see. Golf. Do you play golf, Chip? This isn't about me, John. You talk. Okay, I play golf, but I'm not very good. I, I've been known to sit in a cart and drink a few sarsaparillas. Okay, good. That's what golf's all about for... Remember, you can get these at a K-Wings game. <laughs> ah, You know, I'm really... I've run out of questions, John. This is going really too well. I mean, it's going well. I didn't think, I thought I'd get more zingers on you, but you really held your own. What would you like to talk about? Um, let's talk about hockey. Okay. So I'm thinking that you and I, I mean, I'll be honest with you. When we started this interview, I was pretty certain you weren't going to have a job when the season started. <laughs> they were going to watch this video of me. Essentially, this was an audition for me. Gotcha. Uh, let's get rid of this. To I don't take, need it anymore. To take over for me. Yes. Uh, but, so this was but, like a back door. But the bottom line is this. I'm willing to have you as my color guy. Oh, good. But mostly because I know very little about hockey, okay? I didn't Google dangle and lettuce and flamingo <laughs> to try and stump you. I did because I had no idea. Flamingo actually stumped me, though. It did. Um, uh, did you see that championship ring? You want to take a look at it? I got oh, a, yeah. Did I mention oh, I have yeah, another one yeah. at home? That one, that's, is that a football? That is, uh, okay. yeah. I was, I was all. It's not for fashion. I was all state in Ohio in, uh, in uh, my senior year, not so uh, I feel like I'm really digressing here, and I don't want to steal the life away from the listeners. So this might be a good place to end. Um, I hope that you, the people at home, Kalamazoo Wings fans, and everyone else is going to tune in. If you're looking for hair, DM me hair tips. Um, hopefully you got to know your broadcaster and director of public relations a little bit. Uh, I will say he did a tremendous job in this interview. He is normally the one asking the questions. He came in very unprepared. <laughs> By that I mean he had no idea what I was going to ask him. Okay? This was not scripted. And this isn't scripted. It's premeditated. You don't just wake up looking this good. Anyways. Uh, kudos to John, and I can, 
I can say with all seriousness that he is a tremendous broadcaster. I happen to know his boss, who uh, hired me to do this gig. Um, uh, checks in the mail, is it? Check, yep, yeah, checks in the mail. Um, but anyways, he's done a tremendous job, and I know that the K-Wings are excited to have him back. And uh, what do you need to, do you need to say anything to the people, John? Thanks for watching. Thanks for put, putting up with me for, uh, what, six months now? Quarantine uh, can be kind of boring at times, so hopefully we've entertained you and... Oh, whoa, 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 wait, I forgot. Top five favorite movie quotes. Oh, you... that's very specific. Okay. They might all come Give from... me your most favorite movie quote. They might all come Just from... Just one. You can only pick one. Oh, man. <laughs> you um... thought this was over, didn't you? And you... Uh, let's see. It could it could come from I don't know. It could come from Talladega Nights dinner scene. You know the dinner scene where they're all sitting around the table. You know what? I don't want to hinder your creativity here. Or it could come just from start, Dumb and Dumber. Just start saying it. Just start saying stuff. Let's do it. Uh, Let's John do it, do John it. C. Riley in uh, at the dinner table scene in Talladega Nights when he says, "I like to picture Jesus in a tuxedo T-shirt because it says I want to be formal, but I'm here to party because I like to party and I like my Jesus to party." John C. Riley. He's one of the greats. That's one. Dumb and Dumber, um, when they're sitting in the hot tub together, and he says, uh, Felcher from Cranston? Yeah, you know her? Yeah. I mean, I remember you talking about her. So anyway, I watched that last night. That's my favorite movie of all time. I'm going to say a quote, and you name the movie. Red Jacket, Green Jacket, who really gives a <laughs> Happy Gilmore. Hello! And that does it, folks. Thanks for joining in to this new and improved Just Winging It. From your host, Chris, Chip, Chip Stevens, we're going to have to edit that, Chip Stevens, to your Director of Public Relations and Broadcasting, the one, the only, Jim Peterson, John Stevens, John Peterson, we'll see you next time.